Hello out there to you. In this video, we're going to analyze an excise tax. We are told that the government is has created a $60,000 excise tax or per unit tax on the producers for every yacht. Uh, we've got the demand and supply curves before the tax is imposed. So just what you're used to, regular old supply and demand. Market equilibrium would be $160,000 for the price and $200 quantity or 200 yachts okay so we're going to impose that tax uh, and what that does is it shifts the supply curve to the left or you could say shifts it up but it, it makes it look a little weird um, basically it makes it more expensive for each quantity supplied so the way you draw that is you go from from 80 up to 140 and then if you're over here you'd be like 120 up to, this isn't really drawn to scale, it'd be like 180, oh no, that works. Uh, 120 up to 180, 60 apart. This one would be 140 up to 200. This would be 160 up to 220. It's drawn to scale just fine. And then this one would be what 180 up to 240. So distance between the two is the excise tax because that's S plus tax. Total economic surplus before the tax is 24 million. Show it on the graph. It's just to, to be real clear about it, it's just the purple area right here before the tax. And that's total economic surplus. We could cut that in half. This is the consumer surplus. This is the area below the demand curve and above the price. Uh, and then this is the producer surplus, which is the area above the supply curve, but below the price. Okay, add those together and how they got that, they just did one half base times height. So that would be right here, one half for the total surplus. It's the distance between 320 and 80 which is 240, if I remember right, 320 minus 80, yeah, 240. Just gotta make sure. 240 times the number of units, which would be 200. And, oops, I did it again. Go Suns. Okay, uh, 240 times 200. Okay, and then half of that would be uh, 24,000, but then it, this is in thousands of dollars. So if I multiply that by a thousand, it's 24 million. That's where they got that. Consumer surplus after, after the imposition of the tax. So here's what we got to figure out. We got to figure out what, what is PB, what is the price the buyers pay? So you just go S plus tax, follow that to where it hits the original demand curve. It's right here, PB, price the buyers pay is going to be 200. So the consumer surplus is going to be the area above PB or the price the buyers pay, but below the demand curve. So this right here is consumer surplus, one half, and it's from here to here, 120, and then here to here, 150. And this is in thousands. So, thousands. so that number is 120,000 times 150 times 0.5 is half, 9 million, $9 million. It's the area of that red triangle, consumer surplus. Producer surplus, let's do that in a uh, light green thing here. Nah, kind of hard to see, we'll do it in blue. Okay, producer surplus is going to be the area uh, above the supply curve, but below the price the sellers get to keep. So the distance between here and here has to be 60000 because that's the tax. The, in other words, the, the consumer is going to pay 200000 but then of that, 60000 is tax. So this would, be, this would be PS, price the sellers get to keep. So this right here, this is the producer surplus. So that is... Uh, one half, 60, because that's the distance between here and here, uh, thousand in dollars, 
times 150 units. So that's 150 units. Okay, so 60 times 150, 9 million, but half of 9 million is 4.5 million. So 4.5 million is right there. Total revenue from the tax. This is going to be, if we're looking at the, the graph here, it's going to be the area uh, in the middle. Okay, so it's that, it's that orange uh, rectangle there. Uh, but it, if, you, if you don't think about it in terms of geometry, um, it's 60,000 times the number of units. So it's 150 units. So it'd be 150, because that's how many units we sold, times the tax, 60,000. I think that's 9 million. Yeah, we already did that. So it's so it's nine million. That's the government tax revenue. That's the area of this. Okay. Total economic surplus after the imposition of the tax. Now this depends on how you define economic surplus. So what you could do, what I would do, I'm just going to add consumer surplus plus producer surplus. Some people add what's called government surplus to that. And so really it's the area, uh, again, with purple, it's the area here, 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 and here. Okay. Basically the area without the dead weight loss. Okay. Um, so we can just add it. It's uh, 18 million plus 4 million. So 18, well, four and a half. Four, four, four. Could have done that in my head. Uh, 22.5 million if you include the government. If you don't, it's just 13.5 million because you would just add producer and consumer surplus. Kind of depends on how you view that government tax revenue. Is that is that waste? Is that uh, going towards something useful? It's kind of in the definition of the person that wrote the Wrote the question, typically, or the way this question's written, I think it is, we're going to add up all three of those. So it'd be 22.5 million. Dead weight loss after the imposition. So dead weight loss is going to be just the area right here. It's what we lost. So we lost 50 units. Okay, we went from here to here. But the value of those 50 units would be 60,000. Because that's the tax. And... 50 times 60,000, it'll be 3 million. Half of that is 1.5 million. And that's how to calculate all of these questions for an excise tax type analysis.